Sheldon. I'm part of the management team here at Legacy Farms, The Pig Adventure. Today, I'm here with three of our PhD nutritionists from the Aki Company. Dr. Kevin Sierra, Dr. Betsy Newton, and Dr. Keith Adams. The Aki Company is responsible for making sure that all the pigs here at our farm have balanced diets and good nutrition. Aki is also the largest nutritional supplier in North America. So today we're going to talk a little bit about pig feed. First off, what is in our pig's feed? Uh, an energy source, predominantly usually corn, although some other uh, uh, grains and sources such as wheat, uh, wheat byproducts, uh, distillers dried grains uh, from corn, uh, uh, added fat sometimes, especially for the lactation diet while they're nursing their piglets, uh, and uh, a protein source usually such as soybean meal. We also would have um, vitamins and trace minerals, kind of like a Fred Flintstone one a day type vitamin to make sure the sows get all the vitamins and trace minerals that they need in the diet. Um, and then we also have minerals that help grow bone, like calcium, like from milk. You can get calcium from other sources as well. Those are also in the gestating and, and lactating sow diets. And that helps us grow healthy piglets in the sow and then also produce a lot of milk so that those piglets will grow and do well on their moms. I think another thing to point out is we've studied extensively to know and understand the needs of a, of a pig and the various stages of life and we go to great lengths to meet those nutritional needs that the pigs have. Also a thing that I would point out is in the human food industry there's a lot of byproducts that are not used which we can incorporate into pig feed and they are very cost effective and meet the nutritional needs of the pig such as mids from the milling process to make flour. That's not used in the human feed industry. We'll use it in the pig industry. Uh, hominy feed uh, from the starch production industry. There's just a lot of things that we can use very effectively to feed these animals and they can utilize them much better than we could in our human food. Good. Great answers. Well, another question that we get really commonly here on this farm is do we feed hormones to our pigs? Can you answer that question for me, please? That's a simple one, no. <laughs> there are no hormones that are ever fed to pigs that are approved for feeding in pigs or that are available to feed to pigs. So Kevin's right. The simple answer is no. It's all And no, no again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then on this farm, what role do antibiotics play? We use antibiotics in pig feeds when we're trying to treat or prevent disease. So when we use it, it's a very judicious, very focused um, use to help with certain specific diseases. In general, in a sow herd, we don't feed antibiotics to sows at all unless there is a disease issue. The nursery pigs, it's kind of like when you have kids going to kindergarten or preschool or nursery school and you put a bunch of, of kids together, well, you'll get a bunch of snotty noses and things like that. So you would put, take the kids to the doctor and then the doctor would prescribe maybe some antibiotics if there was bacterial infection. It's the same thing here with our nursery pigs. We would put probably some antibiotics into those feeds to help those pigs get over that stress of being all mixed together, but then pretty much get it out of the feed um, at some point in time when they're over that stress and are growing and developing normally. Also, I think it's important to realize that antibiotics are expensive. We don't want to use them if we don't have to. As we've made advances in the swine industry, we have done things so that we don't have to use a lot of antibiotics and therefore we don't do it. A classic example would be when we used to raise pigs on dirt. Uh, if we raised them on dirt, they get internal parasites, every one of them, every single one, which means we have to use antibiotics to combat and handle those internal parasites. As we move them into a confinement operation, because they may not be, they're not exposed to dirt, they don't pick up the parasites there, therefore we don't have to use those parasites and we don't. I think one of the best known examples in the swine industry is trichinosis. It used to be very, very prevalent. It's not existent now because we've moved animals inside. We've taken the exposure away from them, and therefore we don't have to treat or do anything to take care of it. We also, um, there's, there's certain feed ingredients that are all natural that we can bring into sow and pig diets that help stimulate the immune system and provide natural 
um, immunity to certain um, diseases. And there's a bunch of different products like that that are not antibiotic related, and sometimes we bring those into the feedstuffs as well, or into the diets. Okay. All right, well, thank you guys very much. Thank you.